Hello everyone. <laughs> I really, one day I'm gonna fix that intro. Um, hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany, this is the Brittany React Show. And on this show we talk all things movies and movie news. I have to warn you guys just like straight up, there hasn't really been a lot of big movie news this past week. Um, I was realize I was thinking like, why haven't I really tweeted much this week? And then as I was going through like all the big news stories of the week, I was realizing you know what? It's because there hasn't really been much to talk about. <laughs> like, I don't know what's going on with the industry. The industry is going super slow. Um, everyone, <clears throat> sorry, a lot of people on Twitter have been talking about the fact that, like, people in the industry are just saying that they can't find work. There's been a lot of articles have been about it. And as someone who covers just the news, I can tell you there's been not a lot of news to cover either because there's not a lot of deals being made, stuff being made. Um, so yeah, very, very weird times for the industry right now. And when I say weird, I mean not good times, not good times at all. Um, but I do want to say hi, how are you guys doing? Hi, Edgeman, hi, Josh, hi, CD Woods, hi, Lissandra, hi, Julian, hi, Metarian, hi, Deboy, hi, Gerard, hi, Nicholas, hi, Crystal, hi, Devika, hi, Adrian, hi, Arvin, hi, Nate, hi, some person skywalking, hi, Miss Olsen, um, hi, Rulu. Hi, Du Boy. I think I said hi to everyone. Thank you to each and every one of you who comes to my show. I deeply appreciate it because if you guys didn't show up, I would have no one to talk to. So I appreciate you guys just being here so we have a nice, fun discussion to talk about. Um, I do want to tell you guys that I saw Dune 2 again in theaters this weekend just because I really like that movie and uh, I just wanted to see it on the big screen before it's out of theaters. And it just, it, it holds up, y'all. If you haven't seen Dune 2, if you haven't even seen, like, the first Dune, you guys have got to see Dune. Just go see Dune, guys. It's really good. Hello, everyone. Also, I want to address the fact that on Thursday, I had to cancel the show and delay it. I did tell you guys I was going to tell you why, and here is why. So, a lot is going on in my personal life that I'm kind of changing things around and shifting things in my schedule. Um, and my my other job, it's, it's getting to the point where like I would have to have a really late show on the weekdays just to have a show on the weekdays. And it's exhausting for me and I feel like <clears throat> not many people are able to show up because it's, I'm having the show so late on a weekday. Um, so for now, this could change, but I, I, for now, I'm making it so my regular news show, so I always have a show, is going to be on Sunday. At same time, not changing the time. So always going to have a news show on Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then I'll have a second show, basically when I can, to review movies and maybe even shows. So I'll still have a separate show probably to talk about, like, uh, what's it called? Um, Wicked, obviously, and Deadpool, maybe the, maybe, emphasis on maybe, um, what's her face, uh, Velma, just because Velma's so tied to my channel, um, but in general, those shows will have to be like a, as I kind of announce it sort of thing, so make sure you just subscribe or follow my Twitter page so you know when I'm going to be doing those extra shows. I'm always doing at least one show a week, so not going away or anything. We always have at least this Sunday show, um, but I just, I can't commit consistently to two shows a week with my schedule, or else we're just gonna have shows at like eight o'clock at night, and I don't think that's fair to you or me. So, this is just how it's gonna have to be. Uh, sorry guys. You guys wanna see my dog? He's sleeping right now. I'm sorry, but yeah, he's sleeping. I can't disturb him when he's sleeping. He gets really cranky. Maybe he'll wake up during the stream at some point. Um, I know, I, I can't believe Natanya, they're doing season two either. Like, I mean, it's because of people like me who hate watch that show and got it to be as popular as it became. That's why they're doing a season two. That's why I almost feel like, sorry, <clears throat> I'm still getting over my sickness. So if I sound a little bit messy, that's why. But I think, honestly, 
that's part of why I'm like, I don't know if I should react to this entire season because I don't know if I want to encourage Warner Brothers to keep making more episodes of this show. Like, they could put that money towards something else that people actually like. Um, so, I, yeah, I don't know about that. C.D. Woods, yeah, Prancer does steal the show. I'm sure he'll wake up at some point and you'll see him playing around in the background. Um, Josh says, very intrigued to see how Velma Season 2 does against Knuckles and Challengers. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> We're also going to talk about Knuckles a little bit today. Um, I was going to ask you guys if you guys wanted me to review it. I'm still going to review stuff. I'm just going to tag the review at the end of my news shows. So I'm still going to be reviewing a lot of things. Like, I'm still going to be reviewing, um, probably going to see the upcoming Mad Max movie. I'm still seeing, um like the Planet of the Apes and all of that, but it's just going to be like a separate review segment at the end of my news stream. So you're still getting reviews from me. Um, the boy says, I don't know how much of an impact hate watching had on Velma. Morbius literally got re-released because of hate watching and it still flopped. Morbius didn't get hate watched. It just got hate memed. They re-released Morbius because of the memes. <laughs> And it still flopped. Oh, that's so funny. I can't believe Morbius flopped twice, man. That's still, like, one of the funniest Hollywood stories. Um, but yes, hate-watching can be very powerful. I also think the hate-watching is partially why we're getting another, um, uh, what's it called? The Rings of Power show? A lot of people didn't like that show either, yet it's still getting another season. Uh, but anyway, let's get into the show. Like I said... Not a lot of huge stories, but some some fun stuff to cover. All right. I do need to go back a little bit. Oop. My bad. What? Where are you? Sorry, guys. Um, all right. Now, here we go. <laughs> so, A24 Civil War. It actually did really well. It was the number one film domestically for two weeks now, and it's now A24's fifth highest grossing film of all time. Um, it opened, I want to say it opened to around 25 million, which is really, really good for an A24 film. Usually their movies are super small and super niche. Like, I think currently their most successful movie is Everything Everywhere All At Once, and that still didn't even really make 100 million domestically. So this is really good for them. This is a, a much more mainstream kind of movie that they could have made. Currently, A24 is trying to make a few blockbusters so that they can pay for the smaller films that they do. And if their bigger films like this one end up doing this well, then that means A24 might actually be around for a while. Because I remember there being an article a few, I want to say it was a few months ago, that was talking about how as successful as A24 was and how like a lot of people know A24's name, they were struggling financially because a lot of their movies, they don't just do, they just don't do very well. So what their new strategy is, is they're trying to have like, yeah, they're still doing their niche art house films, but they're also trying to do some bigger, more commercial stuff to break it up so they can just have money. And this is their first like example of a big blockbuster that A24 is trying to do. And I think it's going well for them. Yeah, I had problems with the movie. I think the movie overall is getting a mixed reception. As you guys saw, it got a B-minus cinema score, which means that a lot of people who did see this movie did not care for it or thought it was just okay. So as far as quality-wise, I think the movie could have been better. But box office-wise, this is very good for A24. This means that if they make a lot of movies that do well, they can, they can afford to make smaller movies that are much more niche. So that's just good for, like, the, the art form of cinema in general. So I'm happy for it, even though I didn't care for the movie, I'm still happy that it's doing well, just for what it means for A24 as a studio. Um, but are you guys excited or are surprised by this result at all? Um, what do you guys think? Has any of you even seen Civil War since my review? Uh, what are your guys' thoughts? Angel says, what if we did it a third time to see if they re-release Morbius again? I don't think any studio is ever going to make that mistake again. That was really embarrassing for them. Um, or at least they should have learned that mistake. Who knows? Uh, du Bois says, I can't explain why, but that U.S. flag with two stars in the top right looks hilarious to me. You know what about the flag and the two stars? They do so little to explain the background. 
I'm still not even quite sure like what the two stars are. <laughs> like, cause there's multiple, if you've seen the map, there's multiple fronts. There's like the Florida Alliance, there's the Western Fronts, there's the Loyalists. So why are there just two stars? I don't even understand that. Maybe I just missed it, maybe they explained it, but I, I don't even think they explained that to be honest. There's just a lot you're supposed to infer and get, and I'm just like, I wish they had just explained a little bit more. Like I said, I have a lot of problems with this movie, I really do. Um, but just in general, I, I'm at least happy that it's doing well for A24. Um, your favorite project from A24 is Has Been Hotel. I haven't seen it, but I've heard good things about it, so maybe I should check that out. Uh, we are going to talk about Abigail, Josh, in just a minute. C.D. Wood says, I mean, I don't plan on watching Civil War, so I'm indifferent about this success. Okay, that's fair, that's fair. Um, I mean, it's still only about a 25 million opening, so nothing crazy. Just, it's really good for A24, basically. Um, now, just going back over some recent movies that have come out. Uh, the new book, oh my god. The new Ghostbusters Frozen Empire film is doing really well. Well, I would say really is objective, or subjective. Um, it's doing okay. It just crossed 170 million worldwide, and the film has a budget of 100 million. So, yes, technically it crossed its budget, but we all know, like, they don't get to keep all of that money. Theaters get to keep some of that. Uh, they also had to spend a lot of money on marketing. So, I'm not even sure this movie, like, broke even, to be honest. Um, I think usually the, the conversion rate is like a movie has to make two and a half times its budget to break even, and this is not two and a half times its budget. So it might have lost money, or maybe it just barely broke even, I'm not sure, but I'm sure Sony wished that this did better. Or not Sony. This is a Sony movie, right? Why am I forgetting which studio this is? I think this is Sony. Uh, but anyway, uh, it could have done a lot better. Like I said, I thought the movie could have been better too, so I'm not totally surprised it didn't break out. I just think this is a franchise that needs to retire. I think it there's no really there's nowhere to, else to go with this franchise. There's nowhere else to really go with the story. So I, I think it's just tired. It needs to be done. Um, this is about as well as I think these Ghostbusters movies are gonna do now, to be honest. Are you guys surprised by this? Do you think Ghostbusters should have done better? Uh, why or why not? Josh says, my theater already got rid of this movie, so that's not a great sign for Sony. Oh no! I mean, I'm not surprised either. When I went to go see it opening weekend, it wasn't even full in my theater. So I, I always know that's a bad sign, because I go to like a very popular, busy theater in the city, and if a movie is not doing well opening weekend, then I know it's just not doing well, period, because, you know, New York's one of the busiest movie going um cities in the country so if i'm going to say the amc in union square right or even times square sometimes i go there um if i'm going to one of those theaters and i can see my audience is like half full or only a third full and it's opening weekend then i know the movie's doing bad because <laughs> those theaters should be packed um to boy, yes, that's just the general rule of thumb because that's how much like other venues get the money. So just remember, every time you see a certain amount that a movie makes at the box office, they don't get to keep that entire amount. The theater gets to keep some of it. They also have to spend lots of money on advertising and marketing and promotions and even auxiliary sales and even printing DVDs and stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of like upfront cost that it, it, it that goes into even just distributing a movie, so they don't get to keep all of that money, unfortunately. So yeah, I don't think even though it technically made past its budget, I I kind of doubt it broke even, but maybe it just barely did. I don't know. Um, Astronomy says not surprised. A new interest and in nostalgia factor seems to have vanished, and it's just another blockbuster. Yeah, I don't think the nostalgia factor is. I mean, people still are nostalgic about, like, Ghostbusters, the original movies, but I just don't know if, like, that nostalgia factor can be applied to this newer film, just because it seems so different from the old movies. It's really its own thing. Yeah, I just don't think the nostalgia factor is there for this one. Um, oh, the boy, I'm glad I could teach you something. Uh, anyway, so Godzilla X-Kong is also doing really well. 
Um, well, yeah, I would say this is doing well. Definitely a lot better than the Ghostbusters movie. It just passed $400 million worldwide. Um, so that's pretty good for this movie. I believe it's making about the same as the last one, or maybe slightly more. Um, so I'm happy for people who really love these big kaiju films. Do I wish Godzilla Minus One made this kind of money? Heck yes, I do. Because <laughs> just because I feel like Godzilla Minus One deserves everything. And I haven't seen this movie, to be fair. I haven't seen it. But I just know from the trailers and everything I've heard about it so far, there's no way this movie is nearly as good. So I just wish that the better movie got more money, but eh. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm at least happy for monster movie fans because you're definitely about to get a ton of Godzilla and Kong movies now. They're never letting this franchise die now that they know it can make this kind of money. So you're about to get lots of Godzilla and Kong movies. Anyone looking forward to more Godzilla Kong movies? Um, okay, now Madonna's plastic surgery says nostalgia isn't worth $17 in this case. You know what? I think with the box office in general, nostalgia isn't really selling like it used to. Um, like I would say even just five years ago, if, you, if something was very nostalgic of, say, the 80s, it would do really well because people nostalgia really sold well. But I think after seeing all those blockbusters fail last year, I think we're starting to see that nostalgia isn't the main selling factor anymore. I think people are wisening up. And, like, I think instead of getting excited for a new nostalgic reboot of something, people are just getting skeptical because a lot of these reboots aren't as good. So now something that's supposed to be nostalgia bait it's almost like they have to prove that they're worthy because a lot of people just have this idea in their head that it's not going to be good. <laughs> just because we've had so many bad nostalgia bait movies. Um, so I really think that's not what's selling these movies anymore, to be honest. Um, okay, you think there's only going to be one more Godzilla x Kong? They did say that they wanted to do a trilogy. I just think they're not going to stop it there. Angel says, so what you're saying is they should do a crossover... Godzilla x Kong minus one, that Tona would be a mess. I don't even want to be a crossover, because you're right, tonally that would not match. Um, yeah, I'm not, I don't know about that one. Miss Player says, nostalgia is dead. I blame Disney doing remakes and bad Star Wars and Marvel movies. Yeah, I definitely think nostalgia, nostalgia has finally be, been, like, drunk dry. I just don't know if it has the same, like, marketing power that it used to, to be honest. Uh, but we'll see, we'll see. Um, I know I was just talk. I know you guys were talking about the the Ghostbusters movie, not Godzilla. Just just to be clear. Uh, but anyway, moving on. Oh my God, I'm having so many issues. What the heck is going on? All right, okay. Next one. So Kung Fu Panda Four is also doing kind of well. Actually, I would say it's doing really well. Um, it crossed 400 million. 480 million at the worldwide box office, and the film only has a budget of 85 million dollars. Only 85 million, which we've all we've we've talked a lot about the fact that like Disney animated movies and Pixar movies, their budgets are usually ridiculous. So the fact that this movie is only 85 million is a huge win in itself. In of itself, if this movie had the same kind of budget that that say like movies like Wish have, which are like 200 to 250 million dollars. This box office here of 480 million would be seen as a failure. Because as I just told you guys, and I think as the boy just learned, you generally have to make about two and a half times your budget to, in order to break even. So they've done that because their budget was so low. So they're definitely profitable. This movie is definitely successful. Um, but if it had the budget of like a typical Disney Pixar film though, this, this this box office would not have been as good, and it may have only broke even. So it's really good that this budget was low, because then this is able to be seen as a success. Otherwise, it would have been seen as a flop. But because the budget's only $85 million, this is actually fine. So as someone who I, I liked the movie, I know a lot of you didn't like it at all. Uh, I thought it was fine. I, I think this is okay. I'm happy for it. But yeah, this is good for DreamWorks. Uh, what do you guys think about this? Kung Fu Panda 4 has me terrified of the new Shrek. The last Puss in Boots was amazing. Then we get this. Like, how did DreamWorks even release this film? 
Man, I don't know. I I feel like I missed what you guys saw in that movie. Like, I, yeah, I don't think it's great. It's not as good as Puss in Boots or anything, but I didn't think it was so terrible that it was, like, unreleasable. It's not like that mermaid, that Kraken movie, Teenage Kraken, that, that movie I reviewed last year. It's not as bad as that. Not nearly as bad as that. Um, so I don't know. I thought it was okay. It's watchable. It's definitely watchable. I thought the Kraken movie, that was unreleasable. The Blue Gecko Nerd says, I finally watched Kung Fu Panda 4, and it's really good the critics are just being overdramatic. I kind of agree. I thought it was decent. I'm glad I have someone in the chat who agrees with me. I'm really looking forward to the next Shrek movie, though. I think the next Shrek movie could be a really big deal. I really do. The Lion Dog Show says it was decent, but I'm worried that they won't improve upon the issues the film had. Um, I mean, I don't think they're doing another one. If they are doing another one, it's just another cash grab, but we'll see. Have they announced another movie? I have no idea, but I wouldn't be surprised if they keep making more of these forever, as long as they keep making money. Uh, but anyway, now we're talking about Abigail, which is a new horror movie that just came out this weekend. It actually did pretty well. It opened at 51 or $15.1 million in its worldwide box office opening with just a budget of $28 million. Now, again, I wish this was $15 million domestic, not $15 million, $15 million worldwide. That would have been a lot better. But at least, you know, it opened to about half its budget in its opening weekend, so it should at least make break even or at least a little bit of profit. Um, so it's doing okay. It's doing okay. It could have done better. This isn't, you know, a Megan level success. This isn't even a smile level, level of success. It's very much a small level of success, but it'll do well enough to break even because the budget is so small. Um, I think the reviews have been good as well. Um, and it has a B cinema score for a horror film. A B cinema score is very good because usually cinema scores have much worse like, much, much worse, like, cinema scores. So a B is actually okay. Um, did anyone see Abigail? You guys know I don't really care about horror movies that much, so I don't really see them. Um, Josh, I think you were asking about Abigail. So you're happy that Abigail is doing well? That's good. It does have Melissa Barrera in it. Um, I, it seems like Melissa Barrera is really making a name for herself in the horror movie space. Let's see if she can continue getting work. I don't know if she's been blacklisted or not. Um, so we'll see what she does after this year. I'm really curious to see what happens with her career. Um, Du Bois says, a new horror movie that YouTube seems to love, spamming me with ads about it. <laughs> I'm so glad I pay for YouTube Premium so I don't get ads. I just, I watch YouTube too much to, like, handle ads, so I had to get YouTube Premium. Um, some duck here says, I keep getting horror movie ads. Oh my god, you too? Apparently you guys are getting spammed with ads? See, I don't see them because I get YouTube Premium. I have no idea. Um, none of these movies interest you so far, Quidote. Yeah, I would say, like I said at the beginning, this 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 episode is a pretty much slow movie news. There wasn't really a lot of big movie news to talk about this week, unfortunately. Um, but anyway, we do have the top five highest grossing movies of 2024 so far. I just wanted to give you guys a, a little bit of an update since we're like almost halfway through the year. Can you believe it? Um, so, Doom Part 2, 685.3 million, um, million. It's okay. That's a really good number. It is a good number. It's definitely profitable. It's doing well enough that we're getting a third. But there were a lot of reports leading up to this movie that the studio was hoping that this, would move, this movie would make at least a billion. And it definitely didn't even come close. So, as I've said, even though this is a very successful franchise, Dune... It's still a very successful niche franchise. It's not a billion dollar franchise. It's not, you know, something that I think the entire general public is really into. I really think it has its, like, niche core fan base of supporters that just, like, really go hard for it and see it multiple times in theaters. And that's fine. Not every franchise has to be a billion dollar franchise. I just feel like this, these movies are good enough that they deserve that title. Um, but it's all right. At least it's doing well enough that we're getting the third movie. And then Kung Fu Panda 4, surprisingly, is at number two at 454.9 million. 
And then at number three, we have Godzilla X Kong, The New Empire at $440 million. The Bob Marley movie, believe it or not, I actually did see the Bob Marley movie. I didn't review it, but I did see it. Um, it's at $176.9 million. I am surprised it made that much. Like, there's been a lot of biopics from, like, musicians and actors, like the Whitney Houston biopic, um, the Elton John biopic. There's been a lot of biopics. And I don't think a lot of them have done this well. So, good for Bob Marley. That means his legacy still lives on, obviously. <laughs> There's a video um, yesterday, because, you know, obviously yesterday was 420. Um, There's a video of, like, a bunch of people in the park in New York City smoking a joint. And it's, like, just cloudy, full of puffs. I just thought it was so funny. It's like, wow. Marijuana stigmatization has come a long way, because now it's just so accepted. It's so different from when I was a kid, when it was still, like, very much taboo. And now, like, here in New York City, it's so mainstream. You can go into a convenience store and see, like, a cup of joints next to some soda. <laughs> it's just very interesting to me. Uh, but anyway, at number five, we have Ghostbusters at 160.7. So, I would say overall, this list tells me that the box office this year has been pretty weak. Um, like, these numbers, Sam, say maybe the top two are actually pretty weak overall, especially since Ghostbusters, as we just talked about, I'm not even sure that has broken even or made any money. So, for that to be in the top five, that just means that overall the box office isn't doing too hot, at least at the beginning of the year. I think that could change, because summer looks to be pretty good. Um, and maybe some of the later movies in the year, like Joker and Wicked, could do really well. Um, but so far, these numbers are pretty low to me. Are any of these numbers a surprise to you guys? What do you think? Um, Miss Player says, Hercules' source material is probably the darkest one Disney attempted to adapt. It makes The Hunchback look like a kid's book. They're making a Hercules movie, a Hercules live-action movie. I'm very curious to see how that turns out, because they want to TikTokify it. No idea what that means. It could mean something really bad, though. Sorry. It could mean something very, very bad. Uh, oh, yeah, and also the Sonic movie, Nikisa. Thank you for mentioning that. So we do have some movies later in the year that could do really well, but, like, the first, I would say the first quarter of this year has been rough for, for movies and Hollywood in general, because, uh, like, a lot of these numbers aren't that big. Um, JoJo says, I'll be honest, any movie that I have watched before from, I think, last year or two years ago didn't manage to make me feel anything, but some managed to complete that accomplishment. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I would say there's been, at least for me, only a few movies every year that, that has come out where I'm, like, deeply moved by it, impacted by it, impacted by it, and the others I'm just kind of like, eh, or it was just okay. Uh, I don't know if it's just a me thing or if, like, movies in general are just becoming, like, kind of just okay. I don't know. Uh, but I, I totally agree with you. Primal Plasma says the numbers aren't a surprise for me because there are so few movies in theaters that families don't have much of a choice in movies these days. That's very true. That's probably why the Kung Fu Panda 4 movie did so well because it's one of the few family films that you can actually see in a theater. That's a great point. I wonder if the Despicable Me movie will probably still do a billion anyway, just because it'll be one of the few family films you can actually go see. And maybe Inside Out 2 will benefit from that as well. That's a great point. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, oh god, the Blue Gecko nerd. It's going to go the same route as the Ratatouille TikTok musical? Oh my god. You know what, if they make Hercules into a TikTok musical, at least it'll be so different and out there that it'll be memorable. How many movies do we see nowadays and we're just like, eh, it's okay, you'll forget about it. You won't forget that movie, that's for sure. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> um, I think, yeah, that was the end of the box office section. So moving on to entertainment news. Um, I forgot to completely set these up. Sorry, you guys. All right. Anyway, so Aang, The Last Airbender, which is the film, the film about the adult characters from Avatar, The Last Airbender, that's animated and by the creators, just so you guys are clear about what this is. This is not the sequel to the Netflix show. This is its own 
if you guys remember, the creators left the Netflix show to make their own movie about the original characters all grown up. This is what that movie is. It's called Aang the Last Airbender. And it was supposed to come out next year, and I was super excited for it, and it was like one of my most anticipated movies of next year. But now, now it's not coming out until 2026. So this is a long time, very, very long time, especially when you consider the fact that the reason this whole thing is getting made is because when the original Avatar series, the animated series, dropped on Netflix, I want to say it was in like 2021, maybe? When that original series first dropped on Netflix, it got a new life. It got a new fan base. A lot of people were talking about it again, and it was like trending on Netflix for a long time just because people were rediscovering that show and re-falling falling in love with it again. Um, so that was in like 2021, and that's when we got Netflix to greenlight the, the, the live action series. That's when we had, you know, the whole trickle-down effect that led to getting this new film, um, the new animated film. It all stems from the fact that the original series blew up on Netflix when it first dropped. And that was a couple of years ago now. And now this series, this movie, sorry, it's not a series, it's a movie. This movie won't come out until 2026. That'll be like five years after the initial like hype of the show dropping on Netflix. That's a long time. I mean, the show does have a very passionate fan base. The live action series on Netflix was successful enough that we're getting two more seasons. But I do feel like they're hurting the hype on this movie a little bit by taking so long to make it. I mean, this movie was announced years ago and we're still having to wait for it. Um, I'm so excited for it, but my God, it's going to be, I'm going to be so old <laughs> by the time this movie comes out. It's like the people who are, who are little kids when the original show were coming out are going to be like taking their little kids to go see this movie by the time it comes out at this point. Like, it's just taking way too long. I'm still very look, I'm still very much looking forward to it, but I am disappointed that it's been delayed. Um, is anyone else surprised by this delay? Are you upset by it? What do you guys think? Josh says, I'm fine with this delay as this gives the animators more time to make Aang the Last Airbender worth the wait as Paramount is making an entire trilogy. I mean, it's true giving them more time to work on the animation will hopefully give us a better product. That's true. I just feel like they've been working on this for a long time already. What I'm worried about is that this is becoming a across the Spider-Verse situation where the creators are so hung up on making something that's perfect that they keep reiterating and changing things on the fly over and over again um, to the point that they're still like not even finished when this movie's released. <laughs> That's kind of what I feel like is happening. I feel like these creators are under so much pressure from their fan base to do something right and something good because they didn't really like the movie. Not everyone liked the series. So I just feel like them keep delaying it and keep pushing it off. It's just, it's giving me shades of what happened with Across the Spider-Verse. And I feel like these creators are living in decision paralysis, just trying to make something perfect. Um, and it's just, I don't, I don't think delaying it constantly is going to be good for the movie, to be honest. Eventually, they're just going to have to stick to their guns and release the thing. Um, okay, Mythical Phoenix says, I'd rather wait than get trash. Okay, that's true, that's true. I just think that you can wait too long. I think there is a sweet spot. That's all I'm saying. Um, Miss Player says, I refuse to no longer be part of the young crowd by the time this movie come, movie and Spongebob movie comes out. I mean, I feel like this franchise has, at this point, spans multiple, like, generations as far as appeal. Um, so I think it'll be more than just kids that'll go see this movie for sure. Yeah, Davika, though, yeah, the longer they wait, the, the, the quicker the hype dies down for, for sure. I can't speak today, oh my gosh. Um, they want the avatar effects, like the blue people avatar, maybe. I think definitely having that long break between Avatar 1 and Avatar 2 helped Avatar 2, so maybe that's maybe that's what they're going for, I don't know. Uh, I'm still looking forward to it, just bummed that we have to wait for it. Alright, so now some Marvel news. Now, let me make this bigger, I feel like this is so small, hold on. Is this better? Yes, this, now you guys can like actually read the font, okay. Um, anyway. So, Avengers The King Dynasty is reportedly set to direct 
uh, or set, set to be directed by someone who has never directed a Marvel film before. Which is very interesting because if you guys follow this stuff, you know that Marvel used to, usually likes to hire from um, within. They usually like to pick one of the directors who worked on another movie that did really well and like promote them. Um, so it's very interesting that they're not doing that this time. Um, but apparently the film is expected to start shooting early next year. Now this is interesting to me for multiple reasons and let me get into it. So first of all, the fact that they are picking a director from outside of the Marvel family tells me a couple of things. One is that they're, I think they've run out of directors to choose from. They've, they, they've already pulled a small pool of talent um, from other Marvel films to work on other stuff. Like they've got the guy from WandaVision working on Fantastic Four. They've got, I think they still want Sam, Ma Sam Raimi around for the next Doctor Strange. Um, they've, they've got other people that they've been working with, um, working on other projects in the future. So maybe they're just running out of talent to pull from, but I don't think it's just that. Here And here's why. I think, honestly, because Marvel's quality has been so hit and miss, and a lot of people just haven't liked everything that they've put out recently, there's just like... Maybe there's not enough, enough directors that they worked with that they even trust with an Avengers movie. But that's honestly what I think this is more than anything. I mean, who could they trust with an Avengers movie of this magnitude that has worked on something? You know what I mean? Like, Ryan Coogler is really good, right? But not everyone likes Black Panther 2, and he's already working on um, another movie with Michael B. Jordan at a different studio. And then you have... Um, Dustin Daniel Cretton, who people really like Chung-Chi, right? But who knows when Chung-Chi 2 is coming out? De Dustin Daniel Cretton is already working on another movie as well. So who, I guess, again, I, going back to my main point here, is like, I just don't think that they have anyone within the Marvel family that they could even pull from because either they're working on something else that's in Marvel or outside of Marvel or what they worked on wasn't very successful. It's not like they're going to pull the director of the Marvels to go work on the Avengers or Chloe Zhao from Eternals to go work on Avengers because those movies weren't successful. So I think this just speaks to the fact that Marvel has just been having a lot of issues and they, they're running out of quality talent to rely upon, which is pretty bad for them. Um, but also the fact that this movie is starting to shoot next year, that's huge. I honestly didn't think we were going to get this movie until like 2027. At the earliest, I thought it could even be later than that. So the fact that we're actually getting this possibly in like 2026, early 2026, is pretty good. Um, I still think it's a long time to wait from the last Avengers movie, but I mean, at least it's a little bit shorter than I was expecting because with all the shuffle that's shuffling around that's been going in their going on in their schedule, I really thought that this movie wasn't going to come out for a long time. So the fact that they're shooting next year is a good sign. So that's at least one positive thing. And we kind of know who the villain might be. I know they've dropped the King Dynasty name, um, but it seems like the, the main villain they might be focusing on instead could be Galactus, because it looks like Javier Bardem, speaking of Dune, is being is apparently the front runner to play Galactus in the new Fantastic Four. And I don't think he'll just be the villain of that movie. He'll probably be the villain of also the next Avengers film. Um, so I'm thinking we're probably getting a Galactus. I'm thinking um, that that's going to be the next big bad to take over now that Kang is gone. I'm glad that they're filming soon because that means we're getting the movie sooner. Um, but it also is interesting that they're not going with in-house talent because I think that means a lot about what they think of their in-house talent currently. And it's probably that they need more actual talented directors and I would agree with that um so what do you guys think about all of this what are your thoughts on this let me know what you think oh Angel Barrera thank you so much for the super chat really appreciate it uh, maybe they want to make a No Way Home style sequel featuring all the Avatar actors <laughs> I know you're talking about the Avatar The Last Airbender um I don't want them to do that, man. I like Avatar for being an original story. I don't want them to start just milking nostalgia. I don't want that at all. I get that's just a joke, but I really don't want that. Uh, but thank you for the super chat, Angel. Um, Shang-Chi says, I wonder if Shang-Chi 2 is going to lead into the next Avengers movie since they're both filming in 2025. 
They could be. They could be. I really hope that the next Shang-Chi movie is bigger than... Because even though the first Shang-Chi movie was well-received, it wasn't like... Box office-wise, it only did okay. It, it had the benefit that it came out during the pandemic so that they were able to use that excuse. Um, but it still only made like 400 and something million worldwide. So if they're, if they're trying to use Shang-Chi 2 to, like, I guess launch the Avengers movie, that, that Shang-Chi movie needs to be a lot bigger than the first one. Because otherwise, I don't think that's a big enough lead-in for the Avengers because the first Shang-Chi wasn't that big. So that's the other thing is, like, I'm glad that we're getting the Avengers movie much sooner. But also... Is there going to be enough buildup and anticipation for that Avengers movie to do what they wanted to do at the box office, considering how well the last Avengers movie did? Again, if we're if they're trying to like have Shang Chi lead up to the Avengers, I just don't know if that's a big enough lead in. Um, I just don't know. I really, I'm very curious to see how this movie does, because uh, we don't even know who the Avengers are going to be. So the fact that they're filming next year means that they must have some sort of idea who the Avengers are going to be. But right now, we just have no idea. Um, I know! Where's Wanda? I know, I miss her so much. I'm Adrian, I'm with you. I miss Wanda so much. Um, Angel says, but what are they going to do with the ridiculous loose ends? I'm hoping they address the loose ends either in Deadpool or in the Avengers movie. I actually think they could address a lot of loose ends in Deadpool just because it seems like that movie's supposed to be a major retcon movie to fix every bit of Marvel's problems. Um, so we'll see. We'll talk about how they're going to fix the loose ends after we watch Deadpool, because I have a feeling they're going to do that in Deadpool. Um, Primal Plasma says it takes 10 years for that build-up. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I just don't know if there's going to be the same level of build-up for this new Avengers film that there was for the last one, especially if they're trying to, like, have Chong chi be the lead-in. Like, that's just, he's just not a big enough character for that. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm very curious to see how well this does. Or not. I have no idea. Throw it on the wall. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, Cal Tanya. <laughs> you guys are so funny. Um, Primoplasma, I'm really tired of seeing superhero movies. I'd rather watch horror movies. Well, there's plenty of horror movies. Hollywood's not stopping with the horror movies, so you have a lot of horror movies to watch. Uh, but anyway, speaking of Disney, they're making a Space Mountain movie. A Space Mountain movie, y'all. Um, I love Space Mountain. It's one of my favorite rides in Disney World and Disneyland. As you guys know, I love the parks. I used to work in both parks. I know the parks very well. Um, the fact that they're making a Space Mountain movie, I feel like, is way overdue because it's one of the most popular rides in the park. Both parks. Actually, all parks because there's also a Disney, there's also a Space Mountain in Disneyland um, Paris as well. So this just makes a lot of sense. I just hope that it's a lot better than that Tomorrowland movie because I did not like that Tomorrowland movie. I'll never forget seeing that movie because I actually saw it on my birthday um, and I was like oh yeah this is a nice fun movie to see for my birthday and then oof it was just not good. Not good at all. <laughs> um, so I hope it's better than that film but at least I, I'm happy that they're doing a Space Mountain movie. It's a much, it's a very worthy attraction. If Haunted Mansion got a, a ride, if um, we've had, if Tomorrowland, the entire land can get a, a, a movie, um, then Space Mountain definitely deserves a movie as well. Are you guys looking forward to this? Do you want to watch a Space Mountain movie? Have you ever ridden Space Mountain? What are your thoughts? Uh, okay, Josh is not here for it. Who asked for a Space Mountain movie? I did. I want a Space Mountain movie. I have no idea what they're going to do with it, but you guys know I like sci-fi movies, so I'm here for that. Um, yeah, I mean, it should be a sci-fi movie. I'm hoping they do, like, a big epic hard sci-fi movie, like Dune in space. You know what I mean? Instead of being on a, a desert planet, it's, like, all space battles. I know I'm sort of describing Star Wars, but not really. I mean, like, a more grown-up epic Star Wars. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I hope they do. Um, Prototype says, I still have to watch Tomorrowland. I like the actors and the concept sounds fun, but everyone says the movie is so bad, so I'm hesitant. 
I was I was just like you. When I saw the trailer for that movie, I remember being really excited because I thought it looked really good. And then I saw it and it just it's very disappointing. It's a very it's a missed concept is what I'll say. Um Okay, left on for you thinks Tomorrowland was good but not great. That's fine if you like it more than me. At least you still think it wasn't great though. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, of course, Pirates of the Caribbean. I think Space Mountain is at least as popular as Pirates of the Caribbean and, and, uh, um, Haunted Mansion. So, if those two rides can get a movie, this movie, this ride definitely deserves a movie as well. That's all I'm saying. Alright, moving on. So, now we have to talk about the big villain of Hollywood lately, who is David Zaslav who just, like, will not stop talking about how much he just does not give an F about creatives and the people who work for him. So let's talk about it. Um, after Warner Brothers took various cost-cutting measures, including turning movies into tax write-offs and refusing to pay actors and writers for months, David Zaslav, who is the CEO of Warner Brothers Discovery, um, his 2023 pay package is now at $49.7 million! A 26.5% increase from 2022. This is the same dude that wants to write off that Looney Tunes movie, even though he's never even seen it, just for a tax write-off. This is the same dude that wrote off the, the Batgirl movie and the Scooby-Doo movie for tax write-offs just because he wanted some extra money. But his pay is $50 million a year? That's insane. You guys don't even understand. And that's I, that's just his pay package, man. You guys don't understand. That is not even normal for other CEOs. That is a gigantic salary. He could take a little bit of a cut from his salary and just afford to pay those, those movies. Like, it's ridiculous. He's like a Bond villain. Like, this is Bond villain level behavior. I mean, David Zaslav, he just... Continu continues to prove why he's the worst and why everyone in the industry hates him. <laughs> That's ridiculous. That's so ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, I can't wait for this guy to be gone. Everyone says he's going to sell this company soon. When is he going to do it? And is this is the next CEO going to be any better? I don't know because I feel like Warner Brothers has had like a, a, a just a, a sling of bad CEOs lately. Like I kind of feel bad for them. Um, the voice says, I don't know much about tax laws in the state, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like that he doesn't, uh, but I feel like all these cancellations are bordering on some sort of fraud or evasion. Yes, the boy, that's what I've been saying. It feels like insurance fraud. You know what I mean? Like, allegedly, I guess I should say, I don't know, I'm not a lawyer, I don't know any law stuff, but it does, it does feel a bit like fraud to me. Like, I don't know how he's getting away with it. It should be illegal. And he's doing all this to save money when he himself makes obscene amounts of money. Obscene amounts. Just, I know, Miss Olsen, we need to fire him. Can we please? Yes, Caldonia, he actually makes over $100 million a year. This isn't his entire pay. This is just part of his pay. He actually makes something like well over $100 million a year. And again, that's not normal for a CEO, even at his stature. That's still really high, even for someone of his position. Um, yeah, both him and Bob Iger could go away, and the entire industry, I think, would be better for it, for sure. Um, anyway, moving on. I just had to bring that up, because I was like, what the heck? So, we did get the first trailer for Transformers 1. Transformers 1 is an animated Transformers movie, with a stacked cast. Like, look at this cast. We've got Chris Hemsworth, uh, Scarlett Johansson, sorry. Um, Chris Hemsworth, Scarlett Johansson, John Hamm, Steve Buscemi, Brian Tyler Henry, Kiko Michael Key, and Lawrence Fishburne. What? Why is this movie so stacked? Like, why did they get nothing but, like, A-listers and, like, people at the top of their craft for this? It's just an animated Transformers movie. Now, I will have to say, I do like the animation style. I think the animation style looks very realistic. It looks cool. But I also think, like, what? who's the audience for this? The last live-action Transformers movie didn't even do very well. 
Um, and I saw it, unfortunately, and it wasn't even that great. So who is the audience for it? Are they trying to get little kids to go see this? Or is this, like, for adults who like animation? I'm not really sure. I just feel like, just by the little bits that I've seen from this trailer, it actually did kind of look a little kiddy at times, but then it looked really adult at other times. So I feel like it's a, a blend of both. I'm not really sure. Um... I just think the animation at least looks really cool. I'm just not really sure who the target audience is. It's like it's trying to target both kids and adults at the same time. Which sometimes works. I mean, look at Barbie. But I just, I don't know. The fact that it's animated, I think it's unfortunately going to niche its appeal a bit. But the, it has this crazy cast. Like somehow they were able to convince this crazy cast. Uh to actually, like, be a part of this movie. So, I don't know. I don't know. Um, do you guys think this movie will actually do well? Are you interested in Transformers 1? Did you like the trailer? I do think it looks good. Like, visually, it looks really cool. Um, I'm just not sure why they're going with an animated Transformers movie now. Um, it just seems like a desperate attempt to save the franchise, in my opinion. But what do you guys think? Um, okay, Miss Olsen, your brother likes these movies, that's fine. Um, Mythical Phoenix says, I am waiting for the DreamWorks robot movie. I hope it will be good. Well, speaking of the robot movie, yeah, both of these movies, DreamWorks Wild Robot movie and the new Transformers 1 movie actually release on the same day. So we have two big animated films releasing on the same day. You know what? I'm 100% cheering for the Wild Robot just because I think the wild robot looks really good. Um, it just, it looks kind of like um, the, uh, I forgot the, the other robot movie, but it looks good. So the fact that these movies are coming out on the same day tells me that I think these studios are tr still trying to capture the Barbenheimer hype. I don't think this is going to happen for these two, but I'm at least going to see The Wild Robot. I won't see Transformers 1, but I will see The Wild Robot. Which one are you guys going to see out of these two? Or are you not going to see either of them? Please let me know. Um, <laughs> Prototype says Chris and Scarlet need money now that the MCU is done. But don't you think they're still getting royalties? And, like, they got paid pretty well during it. They don't need the money that bad, right? Unless they just are really irresponsible with their money. Um, C.D. Woods, you're seeing Wild Robot in theaters for sure. Okay. Um, oh yeah, Nagisa, same for Lion King, Mufasa, and, uh, Sonic 3 releasing the same day. Yeah, they're doing a lot of big movies releasing on the same day now. Like we have with Wicked, Wicked and Moana releasing on the same day as well. Um, I think they're all trying to just copy the whole Barmanheimer thing and seeing if anything sticks. <laughs> wild formers maybe that's what we can call it wild formers i don't think that's gonna stick uh the wild transformers robot one okay um jordan you're not into robot movies including irobot you know i'd have to say the irobot movie with will smith is a huge guilty pleasure of mine i love that movie Un unironically it's probably one of my favorite movies i've seen it tons of times to the point where i could quote it i love that irobot movie it seems like our future is iRobot. Like, seriously. Remind me, guys, at the very end to play you the robot clip. Have you guys seen the new Boston Dynamics robot? If you haven't seen it, remind me at the very end because we're going to have to watch it. Because you guys need to see how creepy these robots are getting. Um, okay, JoJo, you're going to see both. That's nice. Oh, no, Devoy. You'd see Wild Robot, yeah. I think Wild Robot could actually win because i'm just seeing a lot more interest on the internet and from you guys for wild robot so i'm cheering for wild robot we'll see what happens anyway quentin tarantino is having a late stage career crisis um he's given himself a limit of only doing 10 movies and he's about to do his 10th movie before he retires at least that's what he says and for a while he was going to make a movie called the movie critic um, but he suddenly changed his mind, even though he had already started casting the movie and he was going to start shooting it soon. So this is very sudden for him. He'd already, like, cast, I want to say some pretty big names from, like, really big A-list stars. 
were already going to be in this movie. So the fact that he canceled it pretty last minute is like pretty shocking. And I think it just, it speaks a lot to the fact that he must be in a lot of like internal anxiety over what his last movie must be. And that's why he canceled it. He must be like, oh, this isn't a good last movie to end my career on. It has to be something else. Um, so it seems like he hasn't decided what he wants his final movie to be. Um, it's just, it's weird that he changed his mind so suddenly, just because it seemed like things were going smoothly. Um, what do you guys think about all of this? Are you surprised by Quentin changing his mind? Were you looking forward to the movie critic? Do you not care? What do you want Quentin Tarantino's last film to be? Uh, please let me know in the chat. Oh no, prototype, you don't want me to show the robot clip? Oh no, I'm definitely showing you the robot clip. Oh no, JoJo says, what's Boston Dynamics? I'm definitely showing you this robot clip now. You guys, I've just sealed your fates. I'm definitely showing you. Um, Josh says, there's still hope for Kill Bill Volume 3. Is that on the table? Was he going to make a Volume 3? I would be there day freaking one if he made a Volume 3. I love the Kill Bill movies so much, especially the first one. The first Kill Bill movie, probably top 30 favorite movies of all time. Love that movie. So good. Um, okay, Rob wants Tarantino to reunite with John Travolta. That would be interesting. Like, what if he had a movie where he just reunited with a lot of his, like, classic actors that he's known to work with? Like, Samuel L. Jackson's gotta be in there, John Travolta. Um, yeah, that'd be fun. What if we had, oh, I was gonna say Bruce Willis, but not anymore, unfortunately. Um, uh, but yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, Leo Galaxy says, probably got cold feet over the critics. Oh yeah, you just know movie critics were going to be vicious about this movie. If you're gonna make a movie about movie critics, it's gotta be good. That's very true. Primoplasma says, I thought Zendaya was going to be in Kill Bill Volume 3. Where is this rumor coming from? I've never heard of it. Well, if that's true, that's super cool. I would love to watch Zendaya in a Kill Bill movie. That's like... Just ticking off all the things on a on a checklist that I love. So yeah, I would totally be here for that. Um, and anyway, moving on. Speaking of other directors and, you know, classic directors and what they're doing, Steven Spielberg is set to direct a UFO-based film uh, based on his own idea. Interesting. David Coop will write the script. Now, Steven Spielberg, I will say he's at a point in his career where a lot of his recent movies, they've been haven't really been like accepted by the general audience. Critics still love them. Critics go crazy for every every Steven Spielberg movie. They still get nominated for lots of awards. But as far as like people actually showing up to go see these movies and like his movies doing well in the box office, he hasn't really had a huge box office hit probably since Ready Player One. And even that movie wasn't that like huge of a hit. Like West Side Story was a huge flop. Um that movie that he made about his life that was like self that was basically a biopic that also didn't do super like super well in the box office so maybe him trying to make a movie about ufos is his way of going commercial again and trying to make a more commercial movie maybe that's what he's thinking about his legacy too in the same way that um quentin tarantino is thinking about his legacy and then he's like i want to make another film that people actually see before i die Maybe that's what he's thinking, because to me, making a movie on UFOs is, like, very commercial, and it's more commercial than anything he's made recently. So maybe that's what he's thinking. I don't know, but that's what I'm getting out of this. Would you want to see a Steven Spielberg movie about UFOs? I mean, he's already made one with The Fifth Element. Sorry, not The Fifth Element. Um, the, uh, the, um, what's the alien movie that he made? I'm drawing a blank on it. Please tell me in the chat. I mean, I know he's already made an alien movie, but maybe he's making another one. That's going to be a lot more commercial. I don't know. We'll see. Would you guys want to see this? Oh, yeah, E.T. I forgot about E.T. That wasn't even the one I was thinking about. So he's made several alien movies. He's made se several alien movies. Uh, Close Encounters. Thank you. That's the one I was thinking about. Thank you, Josh. Um, I hope it's as great as Close Encounters of the First Kind and Nope and No One Will Save You. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. 
Um, Primal Plasma says, I remember when Close Encounters came out. It was in theaters for close to a year. Yeah, but that was a long time ago. I don't think movies stay in theaters for that long anymore, though. Um, yes, you guys are reminding me. It was Close Encounters that I was thinking of. But I forgot about E.T. as well. So he's actually had multiple alien movies, which is fun. Um, I'm hoping it's just more commercial. I'm thinking at this point in his life, he's probably thinking about his legacy. Maybe he wants to make one more crowd-pleasing movie before, you know, he's done with directing. Uh, that's just what I'm getting out of this, just because it's a much more commercial idea than his previous movies, like recently. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Now, speaking of, again, acclaimed directors, Martin Scorsese... It's making a biopic on Frank Sinatra, and Leonardo DiCaprio Caprio, has been cast as Frank Sinatra. I do not get Frank Sinatra vibes from Leonardo DiCaprio. I'm sorry, I really like Leonardo DiCaprio. I think he's a great actor. Loved him basically everything that I've seen him in. I think he's phenomenal. Nothing against him. But he does not have the Frank Sinatra swag that I think he's supposed to bring to that role like when i think of frank sinatra i think of slick i think of laid back i think of cool i think of suave uh, no offense to leonardo dicaprio but i do not think chill when i think leonardo dicaprio <laughs> this is the same guy that what didn't he eat like an, a live heart just to win an oscar this dude can be intense all right i don't think chill back like laid back and chill when I think of Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> what I do with Frank Sinatra, like the effortlessly cool thing, Leo always gives like, I'm trying to be cool. I like Leo a lot. I just do not think they give off the same vibes. That's all I'm saying. Now, Jennifer Lawrence is set to star as his second wife, Ava Gardner. I have no idea. I don't know anything about his wife. I, d I don't know anything about Frank Sinatra's wives at all. Um, I like Jennifer Lawrence. It seems like this will probably be her biggest role, her biggest comeback role since she decided to take a break from the public eye. So this would be huge for her being in a Martin Scorsese movie opposite Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, like ma massive for her. She's been kind of desperate for a comeback. If you guys read the blinds like I do, <laughs> there's been so many blinds about how Jennifer Lawrence has been like trying to network with anyone that she can to try to get back into like Hollywood's public good graces so she can have a career revival again. So if this is true and she does get cast in this role, this would be really good for her career. So this would be the comeback that Jennifer Lawrence is looking for. So good for her. Uh, but do you agree with me that Leonardo DiCaprio is not the right fit for Frank Sinatra? Do you agree with me? Um, Leonardo DiCaprio did Romeo and Juliet. Yes, I know! He was great in Romeo and Juliet. That's actually my favorite version of Romeo and Juliet, that movie. Um, I still don't see Frank Sinatra, though. <laughs> Maybe young Leo? Maybe young Leo, but not older Leo. Um, it's a Don't Look Up reunion. Oh, I forgot they were both in that movie together. You know what? I actually like Don't Look Up. I know a lot of people didn't like that movie, but I actually really liked it. Um, du Bois says, maybe it's just me, but I'm kind of tired of these musician biopics. You know what? Me too. I think it's just another trend that Hollywood's wearing to the bone. You know, there's a Bob Dylan biopic with um, Timothy Chalamet starring as him. And I keep seeing so many behind-the-scenes clips on my timeline keep popping up. And every time, it's just a, like a clip of him walking on the street. And I'm like, is this entire movie just him walking? But even Timothy Chalamet is starring in a biopic soon. Yeah, I think these biopics, especially these musical biopics, are getting a bit out of hand. They're becoming the new superhero film with how many there are. Like, seriously, why are there so many biopics? And none of them have done nearly as well as Bohemian Rhapsody, which is the movie that kicked off this whole thing. So you would think this, fr this, this trend would have died by now, but it's still going. Um, Nikisa says, what career problems is she having? Well, if you guys remember, about 10 years ago, um, late, like, Jennifer Lawrence was on top of the world. She was the go-to it actress that I think Emma Stone now is. Um, she was everywhere. The, the all Hollywood industry loved her. They nominated her for basically everything that she did. She always got, like, she got big top-name directors wanting to work with her all the time. And then she started to be everywhere to the point where she started getting backlash from the public and she decided to 
to take a, a break just because she felt that the public had grown tired of her because there was so much backlash against everything that she was doing. Uh, she took a, a break after doing Red Notice, I think, not Red Notice. Um, there was some spy movie that she did years ago that didn't do very well and she decided to take a break from her career after that. Um, and then recently she decided to come back with that rom-com movie that where she went like full nude. What's it called? Um, that movie that she did last year that was a rom-com that was rated R. That was supposed to be her big comeback, but it didn't do too well at the box office. It only did okay. Like that, the movie with Sydney Sweeney did a lot better. Um, so she hasn't really had like the same level of career success now that she used to have like 10 years ago. And a lot of the lines that I was reading, I was just saying that she's kind of desperate to have that career back again. So that's why I said that this would be really good for her because she hasn't had like a big movie like this with a big director like this in a while. Red Sparrow, that's what I was saying. Thank you. Uh, Red Notice was that Netflix movie that was terrible. <laughs> yes, Red Sparrow, that was it. No Hard Feelings, that was the movie she was in last year as well. I'm just drawing so many blanks, but I'm glad you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh yeah, Michaels is going to be huge next year. I think Michaels' biopic is going to be, is probably going to do very well. Um, yes, Prototype, you didn't know that? Yeah, Timothy Chalamet is going to be Bob Dylan. Very interesting. Um, Dan C says, oh yeah, Cal says her career ended with Passengers. It could have been Passengers that did it, but I think it was the, the combination of Red Sparrow underperforming plus Passengers flopping that really kind of ended her career back then. That's why she's trying to have a, like a, a career comeback now. Oh, you think Florence Pugh is the new Jennifer Lawrence? That's a good point. I actually think that's a good comparison. That's a really good comparison. I would say Florence Pugh isn't nearly as overexposed as Jennifer Lawrence was because she's not really getting leads in these movies. She's just like playing smaller roles. Um, whereas Jennifer Lawrence was constantly in the lead in a lot of films. So I think that Je Florence Pugh isn't as big as Jennifer Lawrence yet, but I definitely think that's a good comparison. Um, who would I cast as Sinatra? Ooh, that's a good question. Who would I cast as Sinatra? You know, Ralph Fiennes. I have no idea if he can sing, but he can do slick. He could do laid back, cunning. I mean, think about his Voldemort performance. <laughs> I know that's a weird comparison to be like, but, but what about his Voldemort performance, guys? But really, Okay, maybe not Voldemort. Think about his performance in the menu. The menu and how he's like, he has a lot of command, commanding presence to his voice and like people fear him. Not that Frank Sinatra is supposed to be feared, but he just has that like quiet stillness, but still very powerful that like I feel like those characters had. Um, so I feel like Ralph Fiennes could do it. I don't know. What do you think? Is that, is that too out of a, is that not a good choice? What do you think? Okay, Devoy likes it. Ralph Fiennes is Sinatra. Okay. Vincent Hull says, hi, Brittany. The wild robot better not flop at the box office against Transformers 1. Honestly, I think between the two, Transformers is likely the one to flop. Just because I think that franchise is already on the way down, whereas The Wild Robot is something new. So I'm, I actually think Wild Robot will do better. Angel Barrera, thank you so much for the super chat. Can't wait for all the biopics to go multiverse. Oh my god. What if there was an Avengers of biopics and we had like Freddie Mercury meets Frank Sinatra meets Elton John meets um, Whitney Houston and like have all these actors come together for like one big concert or something. I don't know. That'd be weird. Uh, but maybe if Hollywood's desperate enough, I don't know. I, I highly doubt that'll ever happen though. Um, okay, prototype, you're also for that. That's good. Brittany H. likes Ralph Fiennes as well. Um, anyway, I'm glad that you guys like my pick, so that's good. That was just a off-the-cuff casting decision. Anyway, moving on. So, Netflix is changing. Both Netflix and Disney Plus are changing some of their things, so let's talk about it. 
Um, Netflix's new film chief, Dan Lin, is tasked with making better films, not necessarily fewer films. So right now, if you guys aren't aware, Netflix has this sort of mandate that they want to try to get out a new film like almost every weekend. Like they put out a lot of new content, like more than any other streaming service by far. And kind of something that they're known for is that a lot of their movies just straight up aren't very good. Like they're known for their movies being kind of bad, whereas, yeah, you know, their shows can be really good or even like astounding. Like take, for example, um, Stranger Things, like their shows can be really big hits, really successful, but their movies, their movies tend to not be nearly as big and not, there aren't nearly as many good ones. So it seems like they have a new film chief and they've been tasked with making sure that their movies are actually good. Um, they said, even though we have made and we are making great films, we want to make them better, of course. So it's, it's really good that they're at least acknowledging that a lot of their movies aren't good. It's not like they're putting their head in their, like sticking their head in the sand and being like, what do you mean our movies are amazing? La 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 la. Like they're not doing that, which is nice. They're being like, yeah, we acknowledge that our movies could be better. Yeah, we know. <laughs> so that's at least, you know, the first step to handling a problem or tackling a problem is to acknowledge that there's a problem. So they're at least acknowledging that they have a problem with their movies not being that good. So I'm hoping now that they have a new film chief that we might seeing, we might start seeing the quality improve a bit. Uh, but what do you guys think? Do you like Netflix movies? Do you think most Netflix movies are pretty bad or pretty good? What do you think? Okay, Daniel Lin says uh, Netflix movies are bland and forgettable. I think that's probably what the majority of people think at this point. I wouldn't even say the majority of them are really bad, like you put it. They're just pretty forgettable for the most part. Um, yeah, it's because the scripts are bad. Yeah, the scripts are usually pretty bland. I'll agree with that. Um, Netflix movies are so very hit and miss with quality-wise. Yeah. I would say more often they're usually like kind of a miss just from what I've seen, but occasionally when they have a hit, they're pretty good. Oh, Daniel says a plus they hire the same few actresses. They do like to hire the same talent from like, if you were in a hit Netflix show, they like to hire you again. That's true. Prototype says if they promise to not finance the rest of the Rebel Moon movies, then we're good. That's true. I didn't even talk about Rebel Moon because I don't care about it that much plus it's I don't, it's not really getting that much interest but yes Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon movies are not getting good reviews so that's the kind of thing that they might want to start making less of <laughs> if they want to start making good movies because there's no way they can make the six Rebel Moon movies that Zack Snyder wants to make if they're all getting like critically panned there's no way um what's your review on the Netflix movie Red Notice I thought it was the most generic spy movie I'd ever seen. I thought Red Notice was really bad. Uh, Miss Player said, No wonder they cannot, they can't animation. They cannot be mid with expensive animation and losing money and time. Well, it's not just Netflix that's kind of like canning animation. It's also Warner Brothers. I think Disney's going to be doing some restructuring with their animation soon. Um, it's really an entire industry-wide issue when it comes to animation. Honestly, I think AI has a, a bit to do with that as well. I think studios are preparing for AI, and like I think AI is going to attack animation first just because it's easier to do animation than live action. Um, but yeah, the whole animation thing is an industry-wide problem. It's not just Netflix. Um, but anyway, moving on. Also, Disney Plus is planning to introduce channels to its service. So the whole, this whole streaming thing is just going back in a circle. We're just going back to where we started. We, we started off with cable TV and network TV and surfing channels and all of that. And then we decided to go into streaming because it was cheaper and more convenient. But now streaming is just turning into cable again. Because now we're getting channels back again. What's old is new again. Um, these channels will function the same as old school TV channels with different channels for different genres like Marvel and Star Wars. So what it sounds like they're doing is that there's going to be like a channel where they're just playing random episodes of say Marvel series. Like you might see an episode of WandaVision, then an episode of Loki, then an episode of What If. Um, and then it'll just be like you're watching TV but they're playing random things from one genre or one from one IP. 
That's what it sounds like they're doing. I think they're doing this to, to combat um, like decision paralysis. Something that a lot of streaming services have to do with is the fact that some people will just scroll forever without actually watching anything and then they just log out. So I think something I think this is how they're trying to tackle that. They're trying to like give you an option to just not have to choose what you watch, but let them choose for you because that's what these channels would be. You would just kind of watch whatever was playing at that time. Um, so I, on one hand, I get why they're doing that, but on the other hand, it's like this is just literally becoming cable again. Didn't we all decide to go to streaming because we didn't want to have to deal with channels and we liked being able to watch what we wanted to watch whenever? And now it's like, oh, but go back to watching channels again so we can choose for you what you watch. Like, it's just, it's all just going in one big circle. What do you guys think about this? Would you actually watch these Disney channels? Especially if they were all just on one IP? Like, would you watch a Star Wars channel? Would you watch a Marvel channel? Would you watch a Pixar channel? Do you think this is a good way to, like, help boost engagement for Disney Plus? Okay, Rob Chuck wants an MCU TV, so that's something. At least one person wants MCU TV. Um... Pretty Princess Sana says, can't wait to teach my niece about channel surfing. <laughs> oh no, I can't believe we're bringing back channel surfing. This is crazy. It really is full circle. Um, fun fact, I was going through some of my old, old stuff, like stuff from middle school a few weeks ago, or maybe it was a few months ago. Um, and there was this time capsule thing that I had to write when I was in like sixth grade, I believe. And I was going through this time capsule thing. <laughs> and I said that one of my favorite hobbies was to surf the net. That's what I said. One of my favorite hobbies was to surf the net. That's how I wrote it. To surf the net. And I never felt older than I did in that moment. <laughs> I was just like, oh my god, this is so dated. I can't believe I said that. Um, but anyway, that's just... Surfing channels reminded me of when I used to say, surfing the net. <laughs> um, Jordan Davis says, children now have to suffer what Gen Z and millennials had to go through. I know, the horror, scheduled timing, how could they? Um, Miss Olsen, oh no. Prototype says, I don't trust Disney with my money. I have Pluto TV, so I'm good. Okay. Um... You'd watch a Pixar channel, Blue Gecko Nerd? A Pixar channel actually sounds kind of nice, not going to lie. Um, very 2000s coded, I know. <laughs> Vincent Hull says, I don't want to see awful series like Secret Invasion and Echo. Well, you could always change the channel. Maybe turn on Star Wars or something. I know, I called it the net. I called it the net. <laughs> it was just, I just had a really good kick out of that because it was such a dated reference. Uh, but anyway, I, I do want to show you, I didn't have WTF news, but now I do have WTF news because I wanted to show you this robot. So hold on, let me go find this robot. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You guys have to see this robot. Um, because how it stands up is super freaky. I'm trying to find it. You guys know Boston Dynamics, right? They have the, the, the popular Atlas robot. Uh, okay, I found it. Here we go. This is... Box office. Okay. This is WTF news, but it's going to go under box office. Alright, so this. Do you see this? How this freaking robot gets up. Unreal. Look at the... The, the, the way it bends his knees backwards and then stands up. Ugh. And then its head turns and it looks like it's going to come at you with the Terminator eyes. And then it just walks away and just... Ugh. Talk about uncanny. What is this? This is like basically real life Terminator. I'm sorry, but did that not freak you guys out? Again, look at how it stands up. Look at that. The future is literally iRobot. The future is... They want us all to have our own personalized robots in our houses. Just like iRobot. 
this is what they want. I don't know, man. I just thought that was kind of creepy and cool, and I had to share with that. I had to share that with you. What do you guys think about this? Jordan says this has Exorcist vibes. Yeah, yeah. Um, should I play it again? <laughs> I'm sure you guys just want to keep seeing this, right? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the way the head turns around, everything. Everything about it is freaky. Okay, Nicholas doesn't scare you. Okay, okay. Um, our overlords have been created, yeah. Um, I know, it's just like how humans stand up, right? I, I stand like that every time. Um, anyway, I just had to share that because I thought it was funny. Uh, but thank you for coming to my show. I appreciate you guys so much for coming to my show each and every week. Again, I love chatting to you guys and talking to you guys. Um, I believe this weekend is the Velma weekend, like when Velma comes back. So I'm, I'm either going to make a whole separate stream for that or I'm just going to talk about it on my stream next week. I'm not sure. I'll let you guys know. I'll let you know for sure ahead of time. Um, so just keep an eye out for my Twitter page or I might post it on the community page. I don't know. But I'll see you guys next week on Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I love talking to you guys. I'll see you then. Bye.